Hello friends. This is Revenger what if how are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto fell in love with Azula and get married with her. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. It was a calm and cool morning in Konoha the sun was just breaking over the village massive wall and people were just getting up to go about their morning routine. However, this was all loudly interrupted by a loud explosion ripping through the less populated part of the village. Ninja poured from their home heading to their posted, while other went to the epicenter to investigate what was happening. Yugao leaped from rooftop to rooftop around the large crater caused by the explosion, looking for anyone that might have been caught in it. She landed on top of one of the tallest buildings around just next to the hole. She looked out across it wondering what could have caused it as no one saw or sensed a thing it just happened out of thin air. Looking down to the center she spoke what looks like a figure lying down at the bottom. Bring her hand up to her two ways communicator she reported. I think I found something in the center of the crater going to check it out she spoke, getting a roger. Leaping down she headed towards it. Golden amber eyes crack slightly open up with a low groan. They looked around in confusion for a moment before closing again, what happened to me, came a crackled voice that belonged to none other than Azula, princess of the Fire Nation. She tried to setting up, but immediately crumpled back to the ground in horrible pain. Letting out a silent scream her head arched back her eye roll up back and she ripped her fingernails off as she dug her hand into the hard ground as the worst pain she has ever felt shoot through her body. When it finally passed she went completely limp fearful of moving any part of her body unless going through that pain again. She looked up at the sky it was strangely beautiful to her right now. Maybe because she hadn't seen it in so long, being locked away in the psycho ward by her bother Zuko. She dared a smile, she knew she was dying, but it didn't matter she was free back out in the sun with the fresh air and cold earth. Earth. She spoke feeling the ground a little with her left hand. How could there be earth when I was flying miles out to sea on an airship? She whispered and wondered about it only to give up as she felt lightheaded and tired. Closing her eyes she resided herself to death, not caring any more about anything. Yugo landed close to the figure, she consciously moved closer unsure if it was a trap or not, but once she saw it was a girl and saw just how badly she was hurt she knew it wasn't a trap. Moved to the teen side and looked her over grimly seeing just how bad a stat she was in. She was bleeding from everywhere and she was certain there was a bone that wasn't broken. She reaches out to check for a pulse and was surprised when the teen eyes open and look at her with groggy amber eyes. What's your name? Yugo asked. She watches as she just looked at her strangely. Removing her mask she tried again, but in the end got the same resulted. She must be out of it she thought thinking it was all the blood loss and injures the girl was. Going to her two ways communicator she called for a media team to come. Azula stared up at the strange woman. She couldn't understand a word she had said to her. Even stranger was that the woman was now talking to herself now and fiddled with the thing in her ear. Did I land back in back in crazy house she thought thinking it would be just her luck for that to happen. Closing her eyes again she decided to ignore the woman. But the woman shook her until she opened her eyes. What do you want? She heisted at her angrily as the shaking really hurt. Yugo raised an eyebrow at the language. The teen had just spoke, never hearing anything like it before in her life. Something is not right, she thought. Before reaching into her pouch, and pulling out some blood pills, and food pills, either way I can't let her die, she might have the answer to what is going on, she thought holding them up to teen lips. Azula at first refused to open her mouth, but Yugo jabbed her in the leg causing her to gasp out in pain. She slipped them in and covered her mouth forcing her to swallow them. Azula glared daggers at the woman and thought if it wouldn't hurt her she shoot a ball of fire at the strange woman. It was then her eyes widened as she felt a rush of energy and her light headiness faded away she looked back at the woman and saw her pulling out rolls of cloth and started to bandage up some of her wounds to try and stop the bleeding. Is she trying to save me? She thought winced at the pain as she wrapped up her leg. All of a sudden several more people appeared around her wearing strand white robes. They crowded around her talking to the woman speaking the strange language. While they work on her, she began to feel uneasy as they would look at her at time with hard looks like deciding on something, no doubt something about me. She thought as one of them then stuck her in the arm with something, but before she could see what it was, she found herself losing consciousness. 
She fought to stay away she watched as a man in long white and red robes flanked by men in black robes appeared. They looked at her and then at the woman and started talking, what's going on? She spoke getting them to look at her it was then she blacked out. Zuko shifted around in bed. He couldn't sleep his mind was on Azula and her recent escape a week ago. He had sent ship after ship to catch her, but in the end to keep her from escaping he ordered her airship shoot down. He remembered watching as the airship exploded with a bright light temporarily blinding everyone around. He wondered what was the cause of it, but what worried him most was the fact they hadn't found her body or any trace of her. She must have gotten away somehow, he thought he didn't think she was dead he could feel that she was alive somewhere. He rolled of the bed and went to his disc to go over the reports again. It was then someone else in the bed move around before groaning and got up revealing herself to be Mai. She focuses on the young fire emperor and sighed. Zuko come back to bed, she spoke. Can't, not until I figure out where Azula is, he answered. You're becoming paranoid Zuko. She's dead, we both saw it. She got out of the bed and walked over to him. She is gone and she is not coming back, she spoke stopping behind him. He didn't answer and keeps flipping through reports. She lets out another sigh and brings her arm around him and hugs him. I understand it's hard to believe it even took me a while too, but she is gone nothing could have survived that explosion. She answered reaching out and gently taking the papers out of his hand and sitting them down. He sighed and leaned back into her, you're right I just, he trailed off. I understand you feel bad for what happened to her she was your little sister, but you knew that she was dangerous. Not just to the people around her, but also to you and your thorn. If got free there was no telling what she would have done. She leaned in and kissed his cheek, you should worry more about your mother she still mourns Azula death. He let out a sad sigh, I know she blames me for what happened. She understood that this could happen, maybe if Avatar Aang was able to take her fire bending away, then maybe you could have done more for her, but it didn't happen and Aang almost got killed in the attempted. In the end it was probably for the best that she did die and was put out of her own misery, she spoke. I just wished things hadn't turned out this way, he looked over to her. Yes, I know. She lets go of him so he could get up. Now let go back to bed, she said. Thanks my, he said getting up and going back to bed. She nodded and laid down next to him rests her head on his chest. Don't worry thing will get better between you and your mother, she spoke. I hope so I looked for her so hard I don't want to lose her again, he spoke. Both soon fell asleep holding each other. Azula Amber eyes opened again groggily she looked around, where the hell am I now, she thought feeling horrible like she has been stomped on by hundreds of Komodo rhinoceros. After a moment of getting her bearings, she notices the strange clear mask covering her mouth and nose. She tried to reach up and remove it, but found she couldn't move either of her arms. Tilting her head forward to see what was going on, she found her right arm in some kind of hard white material only her fingers were exposed and her left arm was strapped down with clear tubs running from her arm to a small bag of some sort of fluids. She then looked at the rest of herself she saw that most of her body was covered in that same white hard material, she could only see only her left arm, abdomen, and toe were visible. Frowning she looked around the room. It was mostly white with a curtain to her left cut her view of the other half of the room. In between herself and the curtain were several strange machines make all kinds of beeping noises. To her right was a large open window with long curtains on either side. In between herself and the window were a small table and a chair. Memories of the strange people came back to her at this point. Oh that's right that woman and the other people she whispered to herself. She tried to free her left arm from the strap, with little success. Finally, after exhausting herself, she gave up and laid her head back. I guess I wait for someone to come and check on me, she thought. It didn't take long as she heard a door open and close and the sound of footsteps. She watched as someone's silhouette appeared on the curtain and more to her side of the room and finally an average size woman appear. She had long black hair and pale wheat color skin and dark hazelnut eyes she was wearing and long white coat with dark gray robes underneath. She was busy looking at clipboard and some sheet of paper. Azula coughed slightly to get the woman's attention. She turns to Azula and smiled, seeing that she was awake. Good you're finally awake. We were beginning to think that you would never wake up, she spoke walking over to her. Azula's eyes widen how can I understand you, she spoke. Oh right. She paused in thought figuring out how to explain this to her, well you see you were in a coma, a very deep sleep, we kind of looked through your mind. You see we weren't sure what was going on when you appeared and we were trying to find out what was going on. 
while there we place the knowledge in, she explained. Azula scrunched up into a frown, she then looked away, I guess under the circumstances it couldn't be help, she answered. She looked back at the woman, tell me where am I and who are you, she asked. Well she took that far better than I thought she would, the woman thought to herself. I am Atsu, she placed her hand on her chest and gave a bow of her head. And you're in Konohagakure hospitals in the land of fire, she paused for a moment. Um not of your fire nation, she answered. I gather as much, Azula spoke she sighed as their way to tilt me up so I can talk easier she asked as her neck was getting tired. The woman nodded and walked over to the wall and pushed a button. The bed started to move lifting her upper body up it to a lean back sitting up position. Better she asked getting a nodded from the fire bender. Where is this land of fire located? As I have never heard of a land called it before, she asked resting her head back. Well. Atsu began, you're not in your world anymore you see we think you somehow opened and slipped through a tear in space into our universe, she answered. Azula gave a snort, that rather hard to believe, she spoke. Not believing a word the woman said. I know it's hard to believe, but it's the truth I have no reason to lie to you, she answered. Tell me can you remember what happened that might have caused you to come here, she asked. Azula looked down in thought. I was running from my brother's ships I had stolen an airship. But I don't remember anything else. Even memories of what happened to me before that or, or after I lost that fight for the thorn is foggy. She then looked up at the woman. Do you know, she asked. Sorry, but we don't. We didn't dig too deep into your mind, just enough to see who you are and to implant the knowledge of our language. That why I asked you we saw parts that you seem to be blocking out subconsciously, she answered. Azula nodded well, it doesn't matter as long as I'm far from that hellhole I am happy, she thought not wanting to remember. What will happen to me now, she asked looking to Atsu. Well Azula nothing you're not a prisoner here once you're fully healed up, it's up to you what happens to you, she answered. Azula nodded and looked out the window, is there a way I can stay here in this village, she asked. Yes, the Hokage wanted to talk to you once you're healed so you can talk to him and he will no doubt let you stay and give you any help you may need, she answered. Even knowing what kind of psychotic monster I am she asked, she guessed, if they saw all of her memories, then they knew all of the bad things she has done. You're not a psychotic monster. You may have a few problems, but it doesn't make you a monster you just need help in dealing with this problem. Something we can help you with, she answered. Getting Azula to look at her a little surprised. You know maybe this is a second chance to start over with a clean slate. A chance to become something better than you were. She spoke walking over and undoing the strap on and releasing her left arm free. Azula brought her hand up and squeezed it a few times before looking back to Atsu. A second chance she thought a clean slate to start over. She looked back to the window and thought. Well I have to go. But I have some nurse come up get you anything you need also don't touch anything and stay in bed as you're still not full healed. I will be back later to check on you. She watched Azula nod she then turns to leave, but stopped short of the curtain and looked back and spoke. Many people don't get a second chance. So don't waste it, she told her before going. Azula watched some birds land outside her window on a tree, a second chance. She thought looking up at the ceiling, I think maybe I like that, she whispered to herself. Atsu appeared in the Hokage office moments later after leaving Azula room. She saw the aging leader sitting behind his desk with his two old teammates standing behind him. She walked over and bowed from the waist before taking a seat. How is she the third asked. She fine just woke up, she spoke. Good, how she take the news to the mind reading, he asked. Amazingly well she seems to understand our reason for doing it, she answered. He nodded now what about her fire bending ability is it something we can learn he asked changing the subject. She shook her head, no like the bloodlines it is something you have to be born with to have, but we do know that any kind she may have or will have it. In fact, unlike the bloodlines it won't fade over time it may even get stronger. Even stronger, spoke Kaharu, yes. She nodded, up until now the people of her world have simply been absorbing the energies from their elements and storing them in their body before using it to control their element. Similar to a Jinchuriki and their Biju, like the Jinchuriki over time the Biju chakra leaking into their network causes their chakra network to expand and get big and increasing their reserves and potency. She right now has as much chakra as the five tails and it's just as potent. We found that out when we bled some of her chakra off it had burned one of the nurses helping giving her third degree burns. 
we think she somehow tapped into her chakra unleashing it all at once. Ripping a hole in between our worlds letting her fall through. And now if she learns to combine her chakra with her bending it will become far more powerful and with her newly acquired ability to earth bending she will become even more powerful, she explained. The three seemed a little shocked by this discovery. Amazing this girl could prove to be a valuable asset to the village, we should get her to stay here, spoke Homura. Yes, but I'm not sure about her mental stability form what I've read she has quite a few problems some of which could prove dangerous to those around her the third spoke unsure of the girl. Sir, Atsu spoke, the girl has asked me if she could stay in the village and though she does have some problems. I think most of them can be cured or surprised with the right treatment. Along with that I have seen that she does understand the many wrongs she has done and showed some want to change. We should at least give her a chance, she spoke. He sat back and thought about what she said stroking his bead he spoke, alright I give her a chance. But I want you as her personal doctor and keep anything on her, locked away only you are allowed accesses to them unless I say otherwise, he told her and his three teammates. They nodded, good, now anything spoken here, stays here understand, they nodded again. Good that will be it. I send for her as soon as she can leave the hospital, he told Atsu who nodded and bowed. After everyone left and Hiruzen let sigh and looked out the window and out across the he swore to village protect. I hope this isn't a mistake, to let that girl stay, he thought. And Azula walked through the hallways of the hospital heading to her therapist Mr. Ido. It's been almost two months since she found herself in this world, after she was out of her caste, Atsu placed her into physical therapy. It hurt like hell trying to will her body to move at the beginning, but she managed to work through it with her sheer determination. She was now able to walk around most places with the help of crutches. But slowly she was beginning to be able to walk without them for short period. Shortly after her physical therapy started Atsu took her to a psychotherapist, Mr. Ito, the man talked to her about her past asking her questions about her family like her mother and father. She didn't like talking about it, as it just brought up bad memories she would like to forget about. But she put up with it simply because after the talks she did feel a little better. The man also put her on herbal drug you either smoked or made into a tea and drank. She went with smoking it simply because drinking tea reminded her too much of her uncle Iroh and on her list of people she hated most he ranked right up in the top 10. When she wasn't doing either of those two things, she was by herself in her room reading up on this world history, politics, and other things she thought were important to know about. A couple of the thing that had caught her interest while reading, was chakra, jutsu, and ninjas. She was amazed by all of it the power you could gain through learning chakra. The many powerful attacks you could use and the way the ninja operated similar to her, back on earth nation with Mai and Tai. She was hoping that she could join this village ninja and learn all she can and maybe find a way home and take back her throne from Zuko. Azula turned a corner and suddenly bumped it to someone causing her to stumble back a little. Looking up she mentally groaned at seeing who it was, Kabuto the gray-haired teen screamed trouble from the first time she saw him. He always appeared when she was alone and trying to probe her with question, but she easily gets around his questions telling him the story that Atsu told her to use in case people asked her, something about being from some far-off island that was destroyed and she was the only survivor. She had to fell in the blanks like family and stuff like that not that it was too hard. Hello, Azula-san and how are you today? Kabuto asked in his creepy cheerful way. Fine, she answered in her own normal grumpy way before moving past him, wanting to get away as she knew he disappeared as soon as people were around. He smiled and followed after her, it's good to hear that. How are your session with Ido-san, he asked. It's going fine he tells me I am making good progress she answered, she turns a corner and saw, Ido, office thank god, she thought. Well I had better get going I have lots of work to do. He spoke walking down another hallway. She smirked, I bet you do, she thought before reach Ito office and going in. Elsewhere in the hospital, Atsu stood glaring daggers at the man before her, Danzo. The man had walked into her lab as they were studying Azula Chakra. No doubt trying to find out what was going on as the third had sworn all to silence about the girl. What do you want? This lab is off limits only to those with the Hokage consent can be here, she demanded coldly not liking the man. I was simply curious about this Azula girl that had popped into the village out of the blue and why the council isn't allowed to know anything about her, he asked. That is strictly confidential only the Hokage is allowed to know anything about her so go, she spoke even colder. Very well, he answered turning away. Stay away from her, 
I won't let you make her into one of your drones, she spoke causing him to stop. The man gazed back at her with his good eye, still holding a grudge about your sister, he spoke, as I told your family she made her own choices, he answered. Oh yeah I bet she did, right to the point she went mad and had to be killed, she spat. As I said before she made her own decision, I warn all who sign up for root the risks in involved, he answered before walking away. She growled and turned around to her team of researchers, let's hurry up I have to check on Azula, she orders getting them all to move a little fast. Sometime later Azula entered back into her room, she was in a bad mood after the session with Ito. The man talked to her more about her mother, something she poetically didn't like talking about. Letting out a sigh she sat down on her bed and set her crutches against the wall next to her before laying back on the bed. She then reached over and took a book of the stack on the table to her right and opened to where she left off and started to reading. The book was on the Nine Biju and she was on the last chapter The Nine Tails Fox. She marveled at the power these creators possessed and what it took to take one down. You had to be very confident that you could win against one these thing or very dump. Apishly The Nine Tails Fox. She wonder how the fourth Hokage had managed it. She had read how he had supposed to have done it, but something told her that was probably false. If it was just pure chakra and a spirit, how could you destroy it, she wondered. This was a conflicting in the whole story. The fact is you couldn't destroy it or kill it, as it not alive and doesn't really have a body the thing would just come back. He had to have done something else, after all someone else should have killed at least a few of the others Biju at some point before him but from what I read all were just sealed away in something. She flipped a page and raised an eyebrow, hum Jinchiriki, she read the title of the next chapter. She continued to read about the demon containers and history. She smirked, weapons of war, she read on, wow, to be able to control all that power is mind-boggling, she paused in thought and put two and two together. He he he, so maybe that's how he had beaten the fox, by sealing it away in something or someone, she paused again in thought for a moment. I wonder, spoke however, before she could ponder much on this more, Atsu walked into the room. Closing her book, she looked to the woman who had a very serious look about her. Atsu is there something wrong, she asked wondering what could make this normally kind woman to look so serious. No pause did a man by the name of Danzo come to talk to you by any chance she asked? She shook her head nope no one other than you has been here she answered. Danzo she wondered I think I should file that name away for later she thought. Atsu sighed and sat down in the chair next to her bed. Lesson Azula if you ever encounter that man be very careful he is very dangerous, she spoke getting the teen to nod. How much longer will I have to stay here for? Azula asked wanting to get out of the hospital and explore the village and its secrets. A few more months, I think. As you're doing very well with therapy, after you leave though you'll have to come back from time to time for checks up to see how you're doing, she answered. Azula nodded. Atsu you think you could teach me media jutsu, she asked suddenly. The Atsu eyes widen a little surprised by the requested. Yes I can, but may I ask why you want to learn, she asked wondering. The firebender shrugged her shoulders a little, I read that one can heal themselves in battle and gain great control over their chakra. That and I'm also kind of curious about it too, she answered. Atsu nodded and smiled, alright then, I get a few things together for you tomorrow to learn, she happily. Thanks, Azula smiled a little, happy to learn something about chakra. After that, they talked for a little while longer till Atsu had to go, leaving Azula alone, letting the ex-fire princess to get back to the book. Elsewhere in the hospital Kabuto had broke into Atsu office, the teen was on a mission to find all he could before reporting his findings on the girl to Orochimaru. He flipped through some files not finding anything of interest, till finally he came to a black folder with a seal on it, taking it out. He carefully disabled the seal and opened the folder. He smirked seeing that, it was Azula. The team quickly started making copy of the files before closing it and replacing the seal back and quickly and quietly left the office. Sometime late the grey-haired teen was running down a back ally way heading towards the gate, going to send word to Orochimaru to meet with him. Turing a corn the spy came to a screeching halt, before him was Danzo and two of his roots ninjas. The man looking at him coolly with his one eye. Oh hello Danzo-san and what brings you here, he asked. The papers you took from Atsu office, hand them over, he spoke. Kabuto without even thinking about it quickly handed them over. The man looked it over his eyebrow raising a little before he handed it back to Kabuto and turning away, tell Orochimaru this info well cost him, 
he spoke before vanishing in a swirl of smoke and leave. Kabuto let out a sigh he knew that could have gone south real fast. Taking a breath the teen went on his way, hoping there weren't any other surprises waiting for him. The two weeks went by and Azula started to learn how to use her chakra. She easily mastered the first three chakra exercises as well as a their basic jutsu the ninja academy teaches, she had asked if she could learn them. She was had just learned how to make the healing chakra, even managing to bring a fish back to life. Which made her strangely feel good, but she chalked it up to mastering it and less with bring a fish back to life. Right now she was doing more complex chakra exercise. In this one you had to balance a kanai in the palm of your hand and getting it to stand up straight and also getting it to spin clockwise as quickly as you can without losing control, the longer you can do it the better your control would have. Ouch damn it, she cursed as she lost control of the blade, and dropped it into her palm cutting her. Frowning, she watched as the blood ran down her hand. She focused little and a dark green glow appeared around her hand and the wound hissed and close before disappearing as if never there. She smirked, it was getting easier for her to do it now as last time it took a minute or two for it to work now it took just seconds to happen. Deciding to switch gear Azula brought her hand out and created her Emphumosa blue flame. She then focused hard on the fire and slowly the fire turned pure white and got even more intensely hotter and then without warning, it turned to a blue glow of superheated gas. Atsu told her that this was the four stat of matter plasma. With chakra she can make her fame become so hot it started to ionize the air. She marveled at the blue gas for a moment before reaching down and grabbing the kanai off the ground. The steel blade quickly melted into a pool of molten metal in her hand, however, it never passed through the plasma, it acted like a bearer. She then poured the molten metal onto the ground, it hissed as it started to cool down. It was like lighting burning though anything she wants, but far easier to control and without the chase of shocking yourself. However, sweat began to drip down her face and she was forced to stop. The gas faded back to a white flam then to her original blue. She looked at her hand not a burn mark to be seen. Ever since she started to use her chakra she noticed the slight changes to her body. Fire no longer burned her she was improvises to the heat, she felt it, but it didn't bother her even her lighting seemed more tamed apishly when she used chakra with it. I can't wait to see what kind of damage I can do in a fight, she whispered before looking down at some stone on the ground next to her. Bring her hand out again hovering it over them she focused on them the shook to life before flying up to her hand. Earth bending, she smiled it was how she escaped her cell. She remembers the day she attained this ability it was also the day she regained her sanity. It started in the late afternoon the royal guard pulled her kicking and screaming from her cell putting all form of restraints on her and dragged her to the royal palace's courtyard. There she saw everyone she hated, the avatar and his group and Zuko with Mai and her mother Ursa. Zuko gave the avatar some sob story about helping her, but couldn't till she couldn't as fire. The monk fell for it like a tone of bricks. The truth was Zuko just wanted to make sure if she ever got her sanity back, she couldn't try to take back the throne. And she could easily do it too. As Zuko hadn't actuality beaten her during that fight the waterbender had stopped her. So the fight was invalid, he never won she was still technically had the right to take the throne. Zuko, Mai and Iroh knew this as well so they either had to kill her, keep her locked up, or take her fire bending away so she couldn't fight to get it back. She remembered the avatar coming up to her and taking a forum hold on her thrashing head and before she knew it. She could feel her power slowly being pulled away, it was at that moment her sanity came flooding back to her. She immediately acted and fought back pulling back and tried to take his away instead, but before she could get far another force appeared. She felt then the other avatar's minds appearing, hundreds of them all pulling on her trying to take her fire bending away. But she refused to give up, to let them take away what she had spent all her life training too perfect and the only thing she had left and what she treasured more than life itself. She dug deep, deeper than, she had ever dug before. Searching for the power to stop them, then it hit her. At first it was a small trickly of power, but then it erupted into a torrent and before anyone knew what happened, there was an explosion that knocked everyone back, causing her to black out. She learned days later, while she laid chained down in her cell, that the avatar was badly hurt almost died from the incident. She herself had changed, no longer crying or having fits of anger. She remembered just lying in her cold hard bed staring up at the ceiling. Not that she had much chose, having her arm and legs shackled down. At the time she knew something had changed in her, something new was there 
but what it was she had no clue. And then, one morning she woke up and was started to seeing rocks floating around a few feet above her, before dropping to the ground. She reached out with her hand to one of them. It shoots into to the palm of her hand. Realizing what this meant, she then spent the rest of that day laughing madly. Knowing that she now had attained the power over earth and had a way to get her freedom and throne back. But it was soon after that something started to happen to her, she couldn't remember what it was. There was just this big blank, but when she really tried hard to remember, she felt very cold, like something really bad had happened to her. Something she didn't want to remember. She had thought about asking Atsu for help, but then decided against it. Believing that if she had purpose made herself forget, then there was probably a good reason for it. Dropping the stone Azula pulled herself up, grabbing her crutches and headed back to her room. The sun was starting to fade over the wall and she knew her dinner would be arriving soon. Tomorrow I start practicing earthbending she thought. She studied earthbending, as well as the other bending arts. She had watched the Dai Li as they trained every day and remembered all those battles with Toph, the avatar teacher. She knew the style very well far better than probably most earthbenders. But doing and knowing was two different things, but with a little time and effort, I should easily master it, she spoke to herself as she enters her room. Deep in an underground bunker Kabuto appeared. There already waiting for him was Orochimaru and his sound five. The man was sitting leaning over resting his head on his hand in a bored manner. Tell me Kabuto. Why have you risked getting caught and jeopardizing my plans? He frowned as he shifted to set up straight. I hope whatever it is, was worth it, he spoke coldly. I do Orochimaru sama, he bowed. A few months ago a strange girl appeared in the village. He reached into his pouch and pulled out a picture and a copy after document on Azula and handed it to the man. Orochimaru looks them over and then the picture paying a lot of attention to her gold eyes. She's not from the element counties as far as I can find out and the Hokage and his advisors have gone to great lengths to hide any info on her from everyone even the council. Orochimaru raises his head and eyebrow. Really now, what have you been able to get so far, his interest now peaked. From what little info I was able to get is quite interesting. Her name is Azula and she already has great control over her chakra and has learned medical ninjutsu. She knows the basic three ninjutsu the academy teaches as well. She also has an abnormally high effect for fire and earth as well as a massive chakra reserves much larger than most junin probably on pair within cage. Her chakra is also much more intense than normal and it replenishes itself quickly, like a biju does with a jinchuriki but she gets the extra power from the environment around her. But without the drawback a jinchuriki would have. At first I thought she might be a jinichuriki, but we already know what they all look like and she doesn't match any of them. So I believe she has some kind of blood limit not seen before and it must be powerful if they're trying so hard to hide it. Orochimaru sat there, going over this new information before an evil smile graced his lips. I want you to continue to watch both her and Sasuke closely gain as much on her as you can. It's obvious that she has some sort of powerful abilities that the old man and his teammates see as a great benefit to the village. When I finally come to test Sasuke I will also test her to see what she is capable of. I want you to contact me on anything new that develops on either of them, he ordered, the grey-haired boy nodded. Good now go. It won't do if you're found out so soon, he ordered. The grey-haired teen nodded and vanished in a puff of smoke. Orochimaru chuckled as he looks at the picture of Azula, such beautiful eyes, I wonder what you're trying to hide old man, he thought. Azula stood in front of her mirror brushing out her hair she was wearing a blood red Chinese dress with black and gold dragon design on it she also had on black Chinese pants. Atsu had bought her some clothes as a gift and to celebrate her final release for the hospital. The two weeks passed by quickly and she had mastered the exercise and her control over her chakra had increased immensely because of it. She also learned a few more media jutsu most of which were for self-healing. She was very happy with the progress she had made, even her earth bending was going very well and now she hoped the third hokage would allow her to become a ninja so she could learn more in ninjutsu. Placing the brush into her new purse, she put her hair up into a top knot and using two gold hairpins held it in place. She turned away from the mirror and went and sat down on her bed. Picking up her cigarette she lit up one and took a drag off it before blowing the smoke out the open window. She was a little on edge right now as she had another run in with Kabuto again. This time he seemed more eager to befriend her. At first she was going to tell him off, but then thought that he might be useful to her in the future and held off on it. She knew that he had to be a spy for someone, 
Everything in her head told her he was, but who it was, was the question. Someone in the village snooping around or outside the village looking for weakness or to steal some power from the village. The signs told her it was an outside force given the fact he was a genin and has yet to move up to Chunin after seven tries. The reason she thought this was that the higher you got the more you're watched and the harder to get info or watching things that happen within the village, being genin would allow you a lot of freedom to move around as few would be watching you. She flicked her ash off her cigarette, she just needed a way to watch him without him knowing it, but before she couldn't dwell on this any longer as the door to her room slide open and Atsu walked in. Standing up and putting her cigarette out, she turned to the woman. That dress looks beautiful on you, spoke Atsu seeing her dressed, I'm glad that I got it for you, she moved over to where Azula was. Thanks again for it, she said giving a slight smile at her compliment. It was no problem besides we couldn't have you meeting with the Hokage in just a hospital gown now could we, she chuckled. Azula chuckled a little too, so who will be taking me to the tower, she asked. It's a new genin team called Team Guy. Atsu paused for a moment. You might want to bring your cigarettes with you. If they're anything like I have heard then you're going to need them, she said nervously. Why in the world did the Hokage give this team the job of escorting her? They'll be lucky if Azula doesn't turn them into piles of ashes. She thought hoping the firebender kept her temper in check. Why? She asked looking at her curiously. Well. Atsu nervously scratched the back of her head trying hard to figure out how to describe Guy or his team. You'll just have to find out for yourself. She answered. Azula shrugged her shoulders. How bad could they be? She thought going over to her bed and taking the black purse off it and started putting a few more things of hers into it to before going. Ten minutes later Azula made it to the tower, behind her was escort team guy. The firebender was beyond annoyed. It was so bad her left eye was twitching uncontrollably and if one was brave enough to get too close to her at this moment they would have noticed the heat radiating off her. All the way there, she had to listen to the two green monsters on the team yell about youth and spirit and many, many other things they yell about. The worst part was she couldn't tune them out it was that bad. She was close to her breaking point but she fought the urge to incinerate the two. She took a deep breath before heading to the door upon reaching it. She immediately noticed that it was made of steel. An evil smirk formed as she quickly glanced back at the team. Seeing that, her escort was lagging behind. The green-clad boy and the indigo-haired boy with white eyes were fighting with one another and not paying any attention to what was going on around them. Smirking. She grabbed the door handle and heated up the whole door to a blistering temperature before opening it and entering the tower, leaving the door ajar so someone could simple push it open. Snickered evilly at the trap she had set, she headed over to the secretary desk. The secretary looked up and smiled, can I help you? She asked kindly. Yes, I'm here for a meeting with the Hokage my name is Azula. Oh yes just go right ahead, he's waiting for you, she said pointing to the door down the hall. Azula gave a bow with her head, thank you very much, she said before turning and headed down the hall to the man's offices. What a kind girl the woman thought as she went back to work only to jump out of her seat, when two blood-curdling screams ripped through the tower. Moments ago outside, Lee was challenging Neji to a fight to show who's better. The Hyuga just simple ignored his green-clad teammate and Tenton was back behind them walking next to Guy trying not to get involved. Both boys got to the door and at the same time, seeing that, it was ajar and reached out to push it open at the same time. Immediately the two froze in place when their bare hands touched the blistering hot surface of the door. Everything was quiet only the sound sizzling flash could be heard. Ah! Oh. The two teens let out a blood curdling scream, ripping their hands off the door leaving skin behind and fell to the ground cradling their badly burned hands. Both Guy and Tenton quickly ran over to them trying to figure out what had happened. Back with Azula the girl stopped just short of the door to the Hokage offices a big evil grin formed at hearing the screams. She then took a deep breath letting it out and then putting a face of neutrally. It wouldn't help her if she walked in there grinning like a mad woman especially with injured people around. Walking to the door, she was about to knock, when an old sounding voice told her to enter. Slightly surprised, she opened the door and walked in. Inside the room, she saw an old man in his late sixties sitting behind an old wooden desk wearing white and red robes. She moved forward stopping just short of the desk and bowed from the waist. It's a great honor to finally meet you, Hokage-sama, she spoke showing as much respect as possible. He nodded, 
and it's an honor to finally meet you as well Azula San. He motioned for her to take a seat. They talked for at least three hours going over many things by the end of it all Azula had got a lot of what she had wanted a clan status and she was able to join the shinobi ranks, starting as a genin. She would be an apprentice under a junin and would meet him, her within a month time. The third gave her an apartment as well as a card which would allow her to go and buy all the things she would need. But it was only good for three days after that it would be unusable. He also promised to give her any help she needed in finding a way back to her world. Azula stood up and bowed again to him. Thank you Hokage-sama for all your generosity. I will try and prove that I am worthy of it, she said. I am happy to hear that. He gave a smile. Now remember to come back here in one month to get registered and to meet your sensei. He explained. She nodded and thanked him again before leaving. What do you think? He asks turning to the open window in his offices. And spoke I hope that you like her and will take her on as you apprentice. Anko hopped through the window and sat down on the window seal and surge. I guess I could give it a try, she answered. But can I ask why me? I mean they're probably better choices. That is just it there wasn't anyone I believe that could handle this girl properly. This girl needs a strong teacher, who won't go easy on her, but will also guide her down the right path, he answered. Anko stared at him with surprise. A little pride welled up in her at hearing what he said. Thank you sir, she said. He nodded before dismissing her and going back to his work. Azula walked back up to the secretary's desk. The Hokage said that you had an envelope for me, she asked. The woman nodded and reached into her desk and pulled out a large envelope. Here you go. This has your keys to your apartment as well as directions to get there and this is your cash card. It's good for three days after that it's no longer usable, she explained handing it over to her. Opening it Azula saw that it did have everything in it and closed back it up and putting it in her purse, she then thanked the woman again and headed to the door. Wait don't touch! yelled the woman jumping up just as Azula grabbed the door handle. She turned to her, yes? The woman stared for a moment, oh um never mind it was just that two genin had touched that door earlier and got second degree burns on their hands, she explained. Azula looked at the door for a moment, it seems fine now, but thanks for the warning anyhow she said before leaving. Once outside Azula burst out laughing, that felt good, she thought whipping a tear from her eye. Walking out into the streets of Konoha she pulled out the envelope, opening it she took out the piece of paper that had the address to her apartment and looked at it. She knew the village pretty well as she had studied a map of it over and over again, so finding the place should be simple. Looking up at the street signs she figured out which way to go and headed off. Fifteen minutes later she stood in front of her apartment it was a red and grey building. It was old and the paint was cracked and peeling showing the old grey worn wood underneath. It was on top of an old bookstore. Walking up the flight of stairs to her door she pulled the keys out of the envelope and unlocked the door and walked in. The first room she came into was a dining room, kitchens, it had a window, table, chairs, frig, stove, sink and cabinets. Closing the door behind her she looked around. She walks down a small hallway the next room she came to was a small bathroom it had a toilet and walk-in shower. The final room was the bedroom there was a medium-sized bed next to a large window and a large dresser and mirror. Walking into the room and over to the bed she fell back onto it and let out a sigh. The place was a far cry from the palace and her huge luxurious bedroom, but it beats her old prison cell and the hospital room. As she laid there her mind wandered back to her old room in the palace. I wonder if all my stuff is still there. She then frowned Zuko probably burned it all to get rid off any knowledge of me, she thought getting up off the bed, after looking around, she made a mental list of the things she would need to get like food, clothes, and other things. She finally left her apartment and head to the market area to get what she needed. An hour later Azula was back in her apartment putting all her new stuff away, it took several trips and she still hadn't gotten everything she wanted to get, but she got all the essentials. A few outfits for the weak food that should last for at least a few weeks and other things she needed. Once she put everything away she went to the kitchen to cook something as it was at least 7 in the evening. Standing in front of the stove however, she scratched the back of her head and stared at it as she tried to figure out what to make. It wasn't that she didn't know how to cook per se, she could cook simple meals for when you're out in the field. Like roasting something, but that didn't sound too good at the moment. After all, she had just gotten out of the hospital so she should celebrate a little. I guess I'll go out to eat tonight and tomorrow I'll go and buy a cookbook, she thought turning and heading for the door. Walking around, she looked for a place to eat. 
Most of the places she saw had too many people and were way too loud for her taste. She was looking for a small quiet place with as few people as possible. That will do, she thought seeing a small ramen bar. Walking over to it, she moved the curtain out of the way and step inside. Welcome to Ichiraku Ramen Bar how may I help you, asks the teen girl with a smile. Setting down Azula looks at the menu. She saw many different things, but finally her eyes landed on something that said hot and spicy. I'll have that with tea, she asked pointing at the items. The girl nodded and told the man in the back her order, before telling her it would be just a few minuets before heading over to take another order. Looking around she saw only a couple of people there in the bar. She leaned forward resting her elbows on the counter and sat quietly waiting for her meal to come. As she sat there, thoughts of her past started to bubble up in her mind groaning mentally. She looked over at the waitress. Can I smoke in here? she asked. The girl nodded. Pulling out her cigarette, creating a small flame on the tip of her finger and lighting it, she takes drag off it, letting its clamming effect quickly washed over her and the memory faded away leaving her in peace. It was at that moment that a small blonde boy at least half her size came in and plopped down next to her. Glancing over at him she saw that he was wearing all orange clothing and had three whisker marks on each cheek which eerily reminded her of a fox for some reason. Raising an eyebrow she watched as both the ramen stand waitress and cook greeted the boy whose name was Naruto. The boy gave a big smile and said, Hi, to them and told them what he wanted. She could guess by the way they acted, they knew each other well, meaning he must be a regular here. The man rings a bell and yelled that her order was done and handed to the girl who then set it down in front of her. Here you go miss, but be careful this is pretty hot stuff, she said. Nodding Azula grabbed a pair of chopsticks and began to eat the steamy bowl of ramen, to the surprise of Ayame. Wow I never saw anybody eat that without burning their mouth. Food from where I come from is usually spicy like this, so I'm used to it, she answered. So you're new to the village? Azula nodded. Where are you from? I came across the ocean. Wow, so are you planning to staying in the village? The ramen waitress asked. Yes. The Hokages is letting me join the village shinobi ranks. I start in a month. What? yelled the boy next to her, who was now standing on his stool and had his face just inch from hers. How do you get to be a ninja? I mean, I've been trying for two years now, and you simply get made a ninja that isn't fair, he yelled in her face. Naruto, don't start fights, Ayame said, trying to stop him. Azula golden eyes stared unfazed into ocean blue orbs of the blonde. Life isn't fair. Azula stated before taking long drag from her cigarette and blowing the smoke in blonde face causing him to fall off the stool in a coughing fit. Azula then paid for her unfinished meal and left the bar hoping to find a quieter place not feeling all that hungry anymore. Naruto was on the ground still coughing from the smoke, he looked up with watery eyes just in time to see Azula leaving the bar. Growling he got up and gave chase ignoring Ayame who was trying in vain to stop the blonde boy. Azula found herself standing on a small bridge over a small stream smoking her cigarette and watching the sun set over the massive wall that surrounded the village, just enjoying the silences. Found you, yelled Naruto standing at the end of the bridge panting heavily. Groaning she flicked her cigarette into the river. She stood up and crossed her arms and turned to the short blonde boy who seemed to have a death wish. What is it you want? She spoke getting annoyed again. An apology and you're going to tell me how you got to become a ninja, he demanded. She sneered at him. Who the hell did he think he was ordering her to do anything? Why don't you come over here and make me squirt? He growled at her for calling him squirt. Fine. He charged forward throwing a punch up at her face. Azula easily sidestepped it to the right and brought her left foot out, tipping him and making him land square on his face. Ha ha ha. Is that all you got little boy? Maybe you should run home now before you get hurt, she mocked. Naruto got to his feet and glared daggers at her. He then lets loose a war cry and charge forward throwing more punches and this time kicks like crazy, only for Azula to sidestep them or knock them away with eases. This went on for a good 10 minutes until Azula got fed up with it and tripped him again, sending him face first, straight into the wooden railing of the bridge busting his lip open. Naruto staggered around for a moment before shaking the cobweb out of his head and went straight back to trying to fight her. I admire your enthusiasm and all, but it's getting late and I wish to get home, she said in a bored tone dodging another kick. Not until you apologies and tell me how you got to be a ninja, 
He breathed out heavily exhausted as he got up and wiped the blood from his lip. I wonder if I could get away with killing him she thought for a moment before shaking the thoughts out of her head. I'm not going to prison or worse because of some dumb blonde she thought blocking another of his punches. She then brought her knee into his gut hard knocking the wind out of him and then brought her elbow down on his head knocking him hard to the wood deck in a heap. She shook her head at him and turned to leave only again to be stopped by him grabbing her by the ankle. She looks down at him with an annoyed expression, you're either the bravest or dumbest person I've ever come across, she stated flatly. Tell me how you got to be a ninja and I'll quit, the battered blonde spoke. She brought her other foot down on his wrist hard to get him to let go, but he refused to loosen his grip. Growling she braced herself on the railing with her hand and brought her foot down on his head several times, not enough to kill him just to get him off, but the stubborn boy wouldn't let go. For the love of the gods why is it you want to know so badly, she demanded finally giving up. The bloody and battered blonde looked up at her with great determination burning in his eyes, because I want to be Hokage one day so people will stop looking down on me and start respecting me, he answered. Azula stared at him for a long while before crossing her arms across her chest and looking away with a frown. I have military experience that's why there was no loophole, you happy now? Now let go, she ordered. Naruto eyes dimmed slightly hearing that, he let go of her and pulled himself up to his feet and began to limp away. She watched him as he limped away, and just as he got to the end of the bridge he fell to the ground. She turned and began walking away figuring he'd be fine but stopped and clenched her hands into a fist and sighed before turning back to him. Thoughts of his deep blue eyes staring up at her with such determination and unbreakable will to win no matter the cost reminded her a little bit of herself. Walking over to him and checked to see if he was alright or not, she saw that he had just passed out. She then noticed that some of the cut and bruise were slowly healing on their own. That's interesting maybe he has blood limit of some sort she thought, she read a great deal about them in the hospital. Storing that for later, she managed to pull him onto her back and slowly got to her feet and headed back to her apartment. I must be going soft she thought to herself as she headed home. Naruto awoke to the smell of bacon and eggs. Sitting up and yawned, the blonde boy then rubbed the sleep out of his eyes and looked around, immediately he jumped up in surprise at seeing Azula sitting there casually eating breakfast. Finally awake, she said looking over at him broadly, where am I and what happened? The blonde demanded very loudly as he looked around. First keep it down and as to what happened. Well that's very simple I won and you passed out and seeing as I could get in a lot of trouble if I left you there. I brought you back to my apartment, she explained before taking another bit of her eggs and toast. Oh, he said getting up and headed for the door. Hold it, she said getting him to stop and turn back around. Sit it, she then pointed to the other chair at the table. The blonde frowned, but went over and sat down. What, he asked looking at her with a cold glare. Paying no mind to the look she spoke, you caused me a lot of trouble last night, so you're going to help me with my shopping today, she finished leaning back and crossing her arms over her chest with a smirk. What, he yelled, I'm not your slave and you can't make me do anything, he yelled standing and heading for the door again, he wasn't anyone pack mule. Oh really I wonder what the police force will say when I go to them and tell them that you attacked me last night she said smugly as the blonde stopped dead in his tracks and clenched his fist. Naruto turn around. You can't I could. Get thrown in jail and kicked out of the academy. She finished his sentence for him with a smirk. The blonde looked down with a scowl. Good you understand your situation. If I go to them you lose your chance to become a ninja. However, do exactly what I say when I say it for the day and I won't tell, deal, she asked, knowing he had no real choice but to agree to it. The blonde growled knowing she was practically making him her slave for the day and he had no choice but to do it. If she tells the police force he would lose everything. Sighing in defeat the blonde spoke, fine I'll do it, he said with anger. Good boy, now sit down. I made you some breakfast and while you eat, I'll explain a few rules you have to abide by for the day, she said in a happy tone. The blonde boy nodded and sat back down in Azula too. She pushed the other plat of food over to him. He took the plat, inspecting the food a little before he started eating it. Now, she began, first you follow me and carry the thing I buy and I don't want to hear any complaining or whining from you. Do that for the day and I forget what happened last night, fair, she asked. The blonde nodded. Yeah I guess. Good now hurry up I have a lot of shopping to do today, she said sweetly. He nodded with a grumble. 
Oh and what's your full name? she asked. Uzumaki Naruto, he answered. Well Uzumaki, I'm Azula, she told him. The blonde slowly ate his food trying to take as much time as possible, but all too soon he was done and after washing both their plates he followed Azula as she headed to the marketplace to start her shopping. For the next few hours Naruto found himself lugging heavy shopping bags around. She would stop in one store buy whatever she was looking for and anything that caught her fancy before heading back to her apartment and put them away, finally when the afternoon came the girl stopped. Okay seeing as you have been good and haven't complained I will treat us to some lunch at that ramen bar from last night, she said. Really, he asked, surprised as people almost never treated him to anything. Of course as long as you're good and do a good job I will reward you, she answered getting a nod from him. After that, they dropped off a few things at her place before heading to the ramen bar. Ayame was surprised to see the two of them together and quickly asked Naruto what had happened. The blonde nervously explained what happened leaving a part or two out. Ayame shook her head at hearing what happened, Naruto you really need to pick your battles better, she said to him. Well what will you two have, she asked. I'll have what I had yesterday, Azula said simply. Me too, Naruto said in a cheery tone, nodding the ramen waitress head back to give her father the order. Once she was gone Azula glanced over at the blonde curiously. She had noticed all the cold glares many of the villagers were giving him as they shopped and started to wonder what he had done to earn those looks. She had tried to ask a couple of people about him when he wasn't around, but all she got was people quickly changing the subject or getting offensive with her. All I know is that he is an orphan with no knowledge of his family and people around here have something against him making him an outcast and that everyone gets all edgy when you ask questions about him like they were going to get killed if they said anything. Or maybe that just it there must be something that people aren't allowed to talk about concerning him. Azula found herself getting rather interested in the blonde mystery not that she was going to dig too deep into his past as she knew better than that. So Naruto why haven't you passed the exams yet, she asked getting the blonde's attention. The blonde looks down at the counter, I fail at the bunch and no jutsu and no matter what I do I can't get it to work right, he answered. Why don't you get your teacher to help you, she asked. They stopped helping me because I don't get it the first time or don't completely understand, not that any of them have tried to explain it to me, he explains. Azula nodded, well it sounds to me like the teachers are at fault not you, she said getting a surprised look from him. Really, he asked. Naruto, there is no such thing as bad student just bad teachers, she explained to him. Ayame came back over to them with their meals, here you two go, she said placing the two bowls in front of them. The two ate quietly enjoying their meals finally when they are done Azula paid and they left, however, she had a different plan she wanted to see just what Naruto's problems were and if he was as truly bad at it or most likely as she thought, the teachers are like the villagers and are purposely not teaching him right. Naruto, she said getting his attention as they walk, how about I help you out with your bunshin problem seeing as I got most of the thing I wanted to buy for day, she said. Really? He frowned slightly suspicious of her, why? He had too many people play tricks on him in the past saying they'd help him, but don't. I feel slightly bad about the butt kicking I gave you yesterday and though I'm not sorry, I figure I could at least take a look and help a little, she offered. The blonde thought it over for a moment, sure I guess, he said not too sure if he could trust the golden eyed girl. Nodding the girl motioned for him to follow her, as she headed towards the training areas. It was minuets later and they stood in the center of a small training ground, okay show me the jutsu. Then I'll see if I can help you, she told him. All right, Naruto said, forming the hand signs. Azula watching him closely, and right away she felt and saw a huge plus of chakra coming off the blonde. Wow, he has just as much chakra as I do, she thought. She clearly saw what was wrong, he was like her having a hug amount of chakra, but no control. So I was right, his teachers are purposely not training him, she thought. The gears in the firebender head started to turn as she thought about how this could benefit her. Finally the smoke cleared and the Naruto stood there along with the two pale sickly clones and a half dead one next to him, see that's what always happens and no matter how hard I try I can't get it to work right, he explained. Azula nodded, I easily see the problem, you have a lot of chakra, but no control over it. I had the same problem, but it's easy to fix, she told him before setting down and motioning for him to do the same. After he got seated, she spoke again, first, she said raising a finger. I'll show you a meditation technique that will help you learn to feel out your chakra better and how much you're using. 
Then, I'll show you a few control exercises that will help you gain greater control over it. She said getting a nod from him. Okay first close your eyes and focus on your chakra, she told him. The blonde nodded and closed his eyes and after a few minutes of trying got it, okay I feel it now what, he asked. Try moving a small amount around your body starting from your stomach to your feet then to your hands, she said. Naruto nodded again and tried, but after a minute of trying it he let out a groan, it's not working, he said. Give it time it took me two hours to get it my first time, she answered a bit annoyed at his lack of patience. What? Two hours isn't there a faster way and how exactly does this even help? He asked with a little whine. Azula sighs a little frustrated with the blonde. Lesson carefully as I will only explains it one time. You see people like us with hug amounts of chakra have the opposite problem than people with regular or smaller amounts of chakra starting out. People with small or regular amounts of chakra have to learn to pull as much as possible out and not waste any of it in their jutsu, while people with large or in our case huge amounts must learn to hold back theirs and use as little as possible and not waste any of it, she explained. Oh I get it. Aruka senses would always tell us to put as much chakra as we can into it, the blonde then paused, but then why then did he not? He trailed off before looking down now realizing the truth. He's just like everyone in the village. Azula spoke as she watched him realizing the truth. What how do you know, he asked looking at her with a mix of fear and surprise. It's that hard not to notice, she said causing the blonde to look back down. Naruto do you know why they hate you, she asked. No, people always hated me and no matter who I asked or how hard I looked I can't find the reason, he said sadly. She nods, well, come on try it again no point worrying about that now just worry about getting this, she said. The blonde nodded and went back to it. Three hours later the blonde got it down and then tried the jutsu again. And to his surprise and joy he got it to work. His bunshin was an exact copy of him he jumped around happy with himself. Azula however, wasn't paying attention to his antics. She was thinking what to do next. He has a lot of power and a little skill and though he is not very smart. I have no doubt that in the right hands. No, in my hands I could mold him into a powerful fighter. It would take time and a lot of work, but it would be worth it. But she trailed off. The memories of Mai and Tai Li flashed through her mind. No I won't fall down that path again. She then looked back at the blonde as he danced around like an idiot. Maybe I should try to befriend him it couldn't hurt and it would be nice to have another friend like Atsu, she thought. Hey Naruto she said getting him to stop hopping around and looked at her, how about I take you under my wing and teach you myself, she said. He looks at her surprised again. Really you'd teach me, he said hopefully. She shrugged her shoulders, yeah you have talent I can clearly see that and with a little guidance you could really be something, she answered. The blonde smiled before frowning again and turning away getting the firebender to raise an eyebrow. This is the part where you laugh at me and say you'd never teach a loser like me right, he said quietly a hint of coldness in his voice. Azula stood up and walked over to him and placed a firm hand on his shoulder. I'm not tricking you. You do have talent and a lot of potential and I can see that you will be something very great in the future, she stated firmly. Why then why help me, I mean no one has ever helped me, so why would you? What makes you different? His voice cracked as he looked up at her with tears in his eyes. Azula stared down at him for a moment. I see a little bit of myself in you. That unbreakable will to be great, but at the same time the want to be respected by others but unlike me you managed to not fall into that cold darkness and not become a monster, like I became. Naruto looked at her wiping the tears away, so she likes me well kind of at least, he thought Azula you think maybe we could be friends he said with a little hop. She smiled a little, yeah sure I'd like that. He smiled and hugged the older girl at first she was a little shocked and was about to push him off, as she had never really been huge before. But she cautiously placed her hand around to his back and let him as she kind of liked the feeling a little. All right come on. I can show you a few more exercises, she spoke getting him to let go. He let go and smiled up at her and nodded. The next day Azula Naruto was tagging along. They were walking around the village she was looking for a weapon store that sold armor Atsu had told her about. She said it would have exactly what she was looking for and that she knew the guy that owned it. There it is she thought remembering the description Atsu gave. A small building with blackout windows crammed in between two larger buildings. Enter the store she saw a large man sitting behind a counter. He looked up at her with a cool gaze. Are you Azula? he asked. She gives a nodded, 
I am. He nodded, okay Atsu told me you would be coming by and what you're looking for, he said standing up. So follow me, I set up something in the back that I think will work for you, he said heading towards the back of the store. The Azula followed suit with Naruto close behind. They came to a wooden mannequin wearing a suit of armor. She walked over to it and started to inspect. It was her size maybe a little bigger it had straps to adjust it to fit. It was similar to the second Hokage's armor as it had the same white mane on it, but with a few differences. The chest armor was heavy dragon scaled armor and the shoulder guards had small spikes on them, three on each sided. There were also skulls engraved in place as well and a black metal skull holding the blue sash tied around the waist. It was a dark blue almost black and the rods underneath were pure black. The cloth they were made from was as strange as it was thick and didn't feel like cotton or silk. And finally there were two clawed gauntlets, they weren't bulky like most they were slim and almost looked delicate showing that they were most likely made for a female. She turns to the man, who was giving Naruto a glare. The blonde was doing his best to ignore him. Coughing she pulled his attention from her new friend. So what can you tell me about this armor, she asked. Yes, it was made twenty years ago by one of the last masters before he died. Is fire proof it this armor won't burn no matter what you do to it trust me I tried. I dipped this thing in molten steel and it didn't even tang it. It's even lighting proof, the guy that made this originally created it for someone with water or wind, to counter those with fire and lighting but I think it will work for you and Atsu said money wasn't an issue, so I pulled it out of storage. Azula nodded she then noticed the strange sword, and this, she asked picking it up and pull it from its sheath she was a little in awe to see the dual katana blades on one handled it was very unique. Yeah, that was made by the man's friend it's much like the armor, it can handle anything you throw at it. Why two blades side by side, she asked. A lot of ninja then and now weld huge swords. This dual form can let you twist the large sword out of your opponent's hands. I don't know if that would work, but it sounds cool, he answered her question. She nodded, all right, I take it, she looked at him. He nodded, I pack it up, you can go find anything else you'll need, he told her. Azula nodded and turned to Naruto, come on, she spoke walking away and heading to the other part of the store. As she shopped she showed Naruto how to tell from good quality weapons to the poor or bad ones. She even bought him a few things some kanai and shrunkens. She even got him some body armor, telling him it never hurts to have a little protection. Walking back to the counter the man had her things in a box waiting for her, but before she paid for it she noticed a seat of hook swords on the wall behind him. She glanced over at Naruto before back at them I'll take those two she pointed to them the man looked back and nodded and took them off the wall. After paying for everything they left the store. Azula stopped just feet from the store, here, she said handing Naruto the two hook swords. He looked at the weapons and looked back at her, thanks, but you paid a lot for these and I don't know how to us them, he spoke. It's fine beside I figure you could use a good weapon and I can teach you how to use them, she answered. He smiled up at her, thanks, he spoke cheerfully again and looked over his two new swords. No problem. Now let's go drop these things off at my house, then we can go and train, she said heading to her place, the blonde eagerly following behind her. Foxes and dragons in the Hokage office, the third was watching Naruto as Azula taught him how to use the hook swords she had gotten for him. He had been notified about Azula and Naruto little run in, a couple of nights ago and has been watching them closely ever since. He wasn't too surprised hearing that the girl had ended up wiping the floor with the blonde but he was a little surprised to see her taking him under her wing and teaching him afterwards. Then again maybe I shouldn't be as the two have lived very similar lives, she was trying to gain the acknowledgement of her father and acted out when she didn't get it from her mother and had the drive to become the strongest of all. The only difference was Naruto wanted the village acknowledgement, that and she went down a very dark path that he hasn't yet. But still, he couldn't help, but feel a little on edge knowing that Naruto was now under the girl's influence. Not that there is much I can do about it and there is a chance that the girl could be a good influence on him as she seems to be trying to be his friend and has been going out of her way to help him. When she didn't have to, he thought, as he counted to watch as she started showing how to do the water walking technique. Naruto fell into the water with a splash causing Azula to break out laughing. Hey it's not funny, he yelled as he shakes his fist at her, but that did little to stop her from laughing at him. Ha ha ha. I finally understand why all my past and present sensei enjoyed this so much, she chuckled watching him get out. 
Okay, now try again. You almost had it that last time, she chuckled enjoying this. Naruto grumbled and tried again. During those two months, Azula found herself enjoying the hyperactive blonde company. She fixed a lot of his problem, correcting his basic fight stances and giving him pointers and showing where to hit a person in the proper spots instead of just randomly hitting them everywhere. When she wasn't helping him she was training herself and bringing her body back to its original athletic abilities. It wasn't as easy, as she had really let herself go. Not that she had much choice in the matter, but she had steadily got back to normal, with the exception of the long dark scars on her running along right side, where she got most of the sharp metal. She didn't have a problem with it, it was just a constant reminder of her close brush with death something she had every plan to avoid in the future. All right. Naruto yelled jumped up and down on top of the water surface, he had finally got water walking down. Azula clapped her hands, good work you managed to do it in just under an hour. A little faster than I did, she congratulated him. Naruto smiled brightly. Really? he asked scratching the back of his head and blushing a little bit. She nodded, yep. She spoke getting up. Well, she stretched a little, I have to get going, so I can meet my sensei. You keep practicing it for a while, she told him. The blonde nodded. All right, good luck Azula Ne Chan. He waved to her before losing control and falling into the water with a splash. See ya later and try not to get too wet, she laughed walking away leaving the irradiated soaked blonde behind. Sometime later, Azula was sitting on a branch high in a tree, trying to catch her breath. She was in her full armor and was on guard, her eyes darting back and forth looking for any sign of an attack. She was in the middle of her Junin Sensei Anko tests. The woman was brutal and if she wasn't so focused on survival at the moment, she would take the time to admire the woman for it. After the Hokage introduced them to each other, the woman took her out to this place called, the Forest of Death, and told her she had a 10 minute head start. It didn't take her long, to figure out this was a test. And in a blink of an eye, she quickly darted straight into the thick dark forest. She knew without a doubt the woman would find her and quickly. So, she focused on slowing her down and weakening her with tarps. And no sooner did she get hunkered down, did all the traps she put up started to going off, as the woman easily got around them. In no time the woman was on her and started conjuring snakes to attack her. If it wasn't for her armor, she wouldn't have been in far worse state than she was in right now. Suddenly the sound of a breeches snapping behind her caused her to jump up and using her fire bending to rocket her high above the tree canopy and into the sky. Immediately a massive sliver snake came shoot out after her, its hug mouth snapping at her trying to eat her whole. She moved her arms in smooth circling motions building up a charge, before sending an arc of lighting at the massive snake's head. Hitting its squire on the nose. It flung its head back and hissed out in pain, before falling to earth. The jolt of lighting was more than strong enough to knock it out. Using her fire bending again to cushion her landing she came down into a large clearing. Damn. She spoke, knowing this was a bad place to be. She was still on guard and was a good thing because Enko appeared behind her crouched down, her right leg out swinging it in an arc and kicked the fire bender's legs out from under her. Azula twisted her body like a cat and flipped back and caught herself and flipped back to her feet. She then quickly grabbed her dual katana and pulled it out and charging the woman's head on, knowing there was no escape at this point. Anko smirked and pulled out her own longer than normal kanai and engaged to the team. Azula showed her great skill in using her razor sharp in the little time she had to learn to use the weapon. She was easily able to keep Anko on her toes using several combinations of thrust and horizontal and vertical strikes before Anko finally locked weapons with her. You're pretty good. Far more than I thought you'd be and with a little bit more time and work you could really be something, she spoke before slugging the girl with super strong punch. Azula coughed up blood and immediately fell to the ground and turned to mud. At the same moment Azula popped out of the ground behind Anko, she was glad Atsu showed her a few jutsu a few days ago. Taking a deep breath and putting her chakra into it, she blew out a super hot stream of white flames at the Junin, engulfing her in fire. Landing a few yards away from the inferno, Azula had a smirk on her face, but that quickly changed when the ground under her, exploded and several snakes shot out trying to grab hold of her. She quickly switched places with a rock nearby, but the second she landed where the rock had been, Anko was right there and delivered a hard kick to her chest sending Azula skipping across the ground hard. 
The woman's coat was burned and smoking a little as the fire was so hot that everything around it caught on fire including her hiding spot. She extended her hand and more snakes were sent after Azula wrapping around the ex-fire princess, into a strong embrace ending the little battle. Retracting her snakes back and bringing the struggling girl in front of her. Well done. I'm not easily impressed, but you really did great, she said cheerfully. Azula grumbled a little she had thought she got the woman. Put me down, she spoke annoyed. Foo 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 a little sore at losing are we? She chuckled. Yep. I think we'll get along great, she spoke dropping her. Azula landed on her feet before falling back on her butt, sore all over from the beating she had just endured, but she knew it could have been far worse. The woman had obviously held back a lot, and that thought made her want to learn more about Jutsu and from her. Well, I had better take you to the hospital to get looked at, but I think with that heavy armor on, you should be all right, Anko spoke looking down at her new ward. Azula shook her head, no I'll be fine, she spoke before forming a hand seal, healing chakra wrapped around her and all the cuts and bruises faded away until they were gone. Anko smirked, so you know a couple of media jutsu, she spoke watching her, he 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 that's good, it means I can work you even harder, she chuckled seeing how pale Azula face got. She chuckled waved her hand in a dismissing manner. I'm just messing with you. Mostly. I got a report on most of the skills you have. So I think you'll work well in integration sector with me, she explained sitting down next to the girl. Integration sounds fun. Will I still go out on mission? Azula looked at her. She nodded, yes, but for most of the time you'll help me out with things, when you're not training and if when you're not with other teams helping them on mission too. She explained. Azula nodded before giving her a funny look, how did you make all those snakes appear? Can you teach that to me? She asked finding the ability to be cool. Anko smiled, so you want to learn to summon snakes uh? She asked getting a nodded from the younger girl. Alright I'll show you how, but not today, she said standing back up. Come on let's go to a little place I know that sell dango and sake, we'll talk more there. Azula nodded and got up and followed the woman. A few moments later the two were sitting in a small restaurant eating, Anko passed saucer of sake to the teen. Here try some, she offered to her. Azula looked at her, the age limit is 17, she spoke. Not for ninja it's 14, so drink up, she answered with a smile. Shrugging a little Azula took it and took a sip, thanks, she answered. Anko smiled, so tell me a bit about yourself, you know, your likes, dislikes, dreams you have she asked. Azula took some time to think about this for a moment. Well I like Atsu in this village, as well as my new friend Naruto. I have a quite a few dislikes, none of which I will talk about. As for my dreams, I guess for now at least to become the strongest Kunoichi around, she answered taking a sip of sake again. Anko smiled brightly hearing the last part, Fufufu, don't get many girls like her in the village anymore, she thought. So, who is this Naruto? She smirked. Is he your boyfriend? She asked, getting Azula to choke on her drink. No, he's like 13. I just like him, he's got a lot of spunk. He kinds of reminds me of you a little bit, she answered. Anko looked at her with interest, really now? Well, you'll have to introduce me to him sometime, she answered with a grin. Hearing that Azula got the feeling she had just done something horribly wrong. The two talked for a long while until it was time for them to get going. Azula found herself really liking Anko. The woman knew a lot and from a few stories she told her about her on early missions, she is really strong. She also likes the woman attitude. She was confident and poured and likes to fight. She could see why the third chose her to be her teacher. They both would get along well with each other. Before they parted ways, Anko told her that she had a few days to get ready and told her to use that time wisely. A few days later Azula was sitting with Naruto in the Hokage Tower waiting to have an audience with the man. The aging leader was at the moment giving out missions to ninja, so they would have to wait until he was done. Azula brought the blonde here today, so he could get made a ninja. She saw that he was being purposely held back for whatever reason these people had against him and was also hoping that he'd be placed with her so she could have a partner as well as someone else she could trust, as trust was something very important when you were out in the field and in a battle. Are you sure about this Azula Nei Chan? Naruto asked unsure that this would work. She looked over at him, yes, you're more than good enough and I think you have been unfairly held back for whatever reason. 
the Hokage is a fair man, if we give a reasonable argument, which shouldn't be too hard in her mind as the man no doubt knows seeing as it was him that enrolled Naruto to begin with. That this is true and will make an exception with you, she explained to him. He nodded all right, if you say so, he answered he trusted her as she seemed to understand this stuff better than he did. Okay, you two can go in, came the sector's voice with a cheerful tone. They got up and thanked her before walking into the room. The Hokage was sitting with Uruka going over mission. The two walked over and stopped in front of them and bowed to them from the waist. Both men were surprised, as neither had ever seen Naruto pay such respect before. It's nice to see you gain Azula san and what brings you and Naruto here today? The man spoke in a kind tone. Thank you, Hokage, for meeting with us. Azula spoke, straightening back up. Hey, old. I mean, hi, Hokage sama. Came Naruto, hello. I guess she was a better influence on him than I thought, Hiruzen reminisced. I came here today to talk about Naruto's schooling, I believe for whatever reason, he is not getting the quality of teaching his peers and asked that he be reevaluated to become a genin, she spoke calm and smoothly. The man raised an eyebrow. Now that was something he had not seen coming. He looked over to Uruka, who was sitting there with a stunned expression on his face. Is this true Uruka? he asked the chunin and teacher. No, of course not, the man spoke taking offense to Azula's accusation. He has been given the same treatment like the rest of the student in my class, he answered sternly. He looked back to, Azula what brings you to this conclusion? For almost three months now I have been helping Naruto out with his training and from the first day I've seen that he has great potential in fact I pretty much fixed the vast majority of his problems. I believe that he deserves another and fair chance to show that he is more than ready to become a ninja, she explained. Well he will have to wait until next year, to show his improvements, just like everyone else, spoke Uruka. Azula looked over at him. Pardon me Uruka-san. I was speaking to the Hokage not you, she said in a cold tone. The man frowned, but stopped when the Hokage raised his hand up stopping a fight from happening. Azula you bring up a rather heavy accusation. You are accusing Uruka of purposely foiling Naruto up and keeping him from passing. She nodded, I didn't mean it to sound that way. From what Naruto told me of his times in class the dose man seemed to care about him and place his job before anything else. However, she frowned, I can also see that he has not done all he could have to help Naruto either. I think that he allows some of whatever so many other villagers have against Naruto to partly influence his decision making. Azula then looked over at the blonde next to her. I work with Naruto and the first problem I fixed was his chakra control as he has the same problem as I did, he has too much and too little control. Atsu is also a chunin too and she quickly spotted it, so Uruka should have also seen this as it is hard to miss. She looked at the man, who was frozen in his seat. I'm not trying to rock the boat or cause anyone any trouble. The man seems to be a perfectly good teacher, but in this one case he failed to do the right thing. Hiruzen looked over at the chunin the man's head was down. That was more than enough to show his glut. Alright given the situation, I'm going to give Naruto one chance. If he fails, then he will have to wait until next year to attend the ninja academy. He looked over at Naruto, do you accept, Naruto? He asked the blonde. Blonde eyes widened hearing if he failed he would have to wait a whole another year to try again. He thought about long moment, alright. He finally spoke with confidence in his voice. I accept. The fire princess smiled at her blonde friend. She knew Naruto will pass whatever test the Hokage threw at him. The man nodded, then it's agreed tomorrow afternoon come back to the tower for to take your test, he explained to him. Naruto nodded before getting up with Azula. They both bowed to him, thank you old, I mean Hokage-sama, he spoke before turning to Azula. She smiled and told him to come on and she would treat him to lunch. After they were gone Uruka spoke. I'm sorry, I failed, he spoke. The aging man sighed, you're not the only one at fault here Uruka. I should have done more for the boy as well. I'm only glad that at least someone is now, he told him. After that they sat, they quickly as they went over the mission and handed them out. Back with Azula and Naruto the two were eating at the ramen stand. The blonde was so fond of. Azula ne chan, did you have to get Uruka in trouble? He asked feeling a little bad about his old teacher. She sighed and looked over at him, Naruto, he allowed his personal feeling to guide his action, but don't worry too much the Hokage won't do anything to harsh seeing as he was trying to change his ways, she explained to him. 
Naruto nodded. All right, he looked down not convinced completely. Thinking quickly of something to cheer the blonde up Azula spoke again, cheer up. She said placing a hand on his shoulder, you have a chance to become a ninja and I will be there to help out. She spoke hoping this worked. She smiled seeing him perk up a little. Yeah you're right, he said more cheerfully racing his chopsticks in the air. They quickly finished the meals and headed back to their little training spot to work on a few more things before tomorrow. The next day, Naruto stood before a tall man with a short brownish gray hair and dark gray eyes. Naruto had aced the written part of the exams and was now told he had to pass the physical part, but it wasn't what he had been expecting. He figured, it would be like back in the academy, throw a few kanai and shrunken hitting a few targets before having to pass a taijutsu test. But the third had other plans for him and told him he had to face a junin in a fight. Not that he had to win he had to just survive for 10 minutes. Naruto grimly got into a fighting stance, this wasn't going to be an easy fight, far from it. But he knew he didn't have to fight this guy, he just had to outlast him and get a few punches in till time ran out and he was certain he could do that much. The man smiled at him, well show me what you got, he spoke to the blonde. Naruto frowned, yeah, and with that he charged head first towards the man, but quickly veered off at the last second and darted into the forest. Yamato turned and watched him go. Well at least he isn't dumb enough to fight me head on. That's a good start, so I'll guess I give him a 5 minute head start before heading after him. Moments later Naruto was hastily putting up the last trap. Done. He thought before moving back to wait in the shadow. It would be just about 5 minutes now, he thought looking at his watch. He guessed that the man was giving him a few minutes head start. So he used that time wisely like Azula had taught him and after getting far enough away he started setting up traps and waiting for the man. Not that he thought it would work and the man would get caught in any of them. But he had a plan and it involved them. Nice traps kid came a voice from behind him. Naruto jumped back just in time to see the man rise up out of the dirt. Just as I thought, he got past them, though I wish not as easy as that. Pulling a couple shrunkens and throws them at the man. Yamato ducked out of the way easily, got to do better than that, he spoke, but quickly noticed the blonde smirk. He quickly looked back and saw the two spinning blade arced into two different directions and cut through two wires, which were holding back to large logs. The two hug logs came swinging towards the man from both sids crushing him. Naruto pulled a kanai, he saw that the guy he crushed was just an earth clone and knew that the real one would be close by watching him. He got my clone well, he's good, but let's see how good he thought, looking around and eyeing all the traps around them making a deadly maze saw the plan the boy came up with and it was cleaver. Getting him to chase him through them, it was a very smart idea and might work against a chunin, spoke. Naruto not waiting for the man jumped up and through the trees, but staying in the area of traps. Yamato followed after creating a few more clones he was going to force the blonde out into the open and get him into a little hand to hand combat. Before ending it, and giving the Hokage his decision on the boy. Sometime later, the third Hokage stood on the sideline with Azula and Anko, waiting for Naruto. He knew Azula wanted Naruto on their team and after a lot of thought into it. He decided to allow this, after all Azula had stuck up for the blonde and Naruto seemed to really like the girl and learned a lot from her. However, before he made this decision, he had a long talk with the girl about her intentions as he wasn't going to just let anyone teach to boy, especially one with a history like hers. The girl explained herself telling him, her full reason for it. That she likes to work with people she really trusted and Naruto was someone she could trust in a fight and that she was Naruto's friend and wanted to help him. He could see she was being censor and after some calm moving Anko, he got the woman to take the blonde on as her ward, if the boy could pass that is. Hum he must be giving Yamato some trouble, he spoke after several large explosions were heard. Wow this kid knows how to cause a lot of distortions spoke Anko a little impressed with the havoc Naruto was causing. Yeah I told you like, Azula answered with a smirk. After a row of more explosions, and one final last big one, Yamato appeared in front of them. He was smoking, his clothes were torn up and he looked a little worn out. In his arm was a passed out Naruto, in no better shape. Anko whistled. Wow, he really got you. The man smiled tiredly, I give him this much he can make a bunch of rather nasty traps he sighed setting Naruto down. So how did he do? The third asked, really well, I think he is more than ready to be a genin, he answered. 
Hiruza nodded it was then Naruto came around. Did I win? He got up and looked around and saw Yamato. Dang it I should have put more gunpowder in that last one, he spoke getting everyone to shake their heads. So did I pass, he asked hopefully. The third smiled, yes you have. He turns to Anko, Azula, and Naruto. Glad to announce you're now a new teammate, he spoke. All right I'm finally a ninja, Naruto jumped into the air. I like to say thanks for the reviews and I hope to see more of them. I would also like to say sorry for the grammar. I have been trying to find a beta, but haven't found one yet. If anyone would like to beta one or more of my stories send me a message, you got to be a beta on this site. Thanks again for the reviews. Azula stared at the seal on Naruto's belly, she wondered if this had something to do with the reason everyone treats Naruto so badly. It has been a little over a month since she helped Naruto become a ninja and got him a place onto with her and Anko. During that mouth they grow to become good friends. Like she had thought Anko and Naruto were too cut from the same cloth. And quickly formed a bond of friendship, one of mischief and trouble making something she took great delight in participating in. No sooner were they made a team that Anko started to put them through their paces training them and getting them up to speed on what it is they would be doing for the next few months. Azula wasn't surprised that they would be starting out doing low rank missions that were nothing more than manual labor you could hire just about anyone for. Naruto on the other hand had the thoughts that they would be going straight out into the field fighting off other ninja and rogue bandits like in so many stories he has read. But after some talking from both her and Anko they managed to get the boy to understand that he had to work his way up to those missions by showing he can easily handle these this low missions first. The blonde understood and said he will do it to show himself worthy of higher rank mission. Training under Anko was one of long hard practices to get them ready for the life of a shinobi. Training them to be killers after all, that's what they would have to do more and more as they rise through the ranks. She had told them first day that this was what they would be doing apishly to Naruto who has no experiences in this area. She told them that many genin nowadays in Konoha don't get this kind of training because many ninja thinks it's no longer needed and too harsh. However, she thinks otherwise and does not want her student to get killed because they weren't ready. The training was harsh and painfully brutal they were getting through it. Thankfully today was their day off and were spending it to the fullest. So tell me Naruto how long has this been here, she asked running her finger around it. The blonde giggled as it tickled, she smirked, oh you like this uh? He shook his head no and she went a little fast getting him writhing around laughing. Alright I do, please stop he begged unable to move to stop her. Seeing he was polarized from this she smiled mischievously, I don't know I kind of like this, she spoke finding the control over him oddly appealing. All come on. We? Need to. Figure this thing oh you. T. He begged laughing harder as her finger went around quicker before stopping abruptly. Fine. She spoke stopping and pulling her hand away and sat back, well, tell me has it always been there? Naruto took several deep breaths and got up, um yeah it's always been there for as long as I can remember, he answered wiping the tears from his eyes. She smiled, well, I think the Hokage well knows what it is, she answered. He looked at her, you think, he asked, as he has never asked the man about it before. Yes I think he would. That seal from what little I know about the art, is far too advanced to be made by an average seal master. And if I'm right then it's either Jiraiya. The third's Hokage student or the fourth Hokage's, Jiraiya student. Why would they do something like that to me? Azula thought back from what she read about the seal, Naruto I think that perhaps the fourth Hokage sealed the Kyubi inside you. What, that's stupid, he spoke looking at her like she was nuts. Azula face scrunched up at hearing him say stupid. In any other situation she would have turned any who said that to her into a pile ash or beat them into next week. Relaxing she coughed a little and spoke, I read in some books about people called Jinchuriki. They have one of the nine biju sealed inside them turning them into powerful weapon as they could use that demon's powers in battle making them unstable even s rank ninja have trouble dealing with them. Besides that you fit the description, huge chakra reserves, a seal on your gut, you heal unnaturally fast, the adults hate you for some strange reason and you just happen to be born on the same day it attacks and you need a newborn to seal a biju in as anyone older would die from the beast chakra, she explained. Naruto thought about it for a while, if what you say is true, then I'm the fox, he asked sadly. No, she shook her head, you're just the prison for it. He felt a little better hearing that, 
If that true, then why didn't anyone tell me before? I think that maybe the third was trying to give you a normal life, or as close to one as you could ever have. She paused for a moment in thought. The truth is Naruto. Most likely you tend to become violent because of the fear and hate around you. He must have known this and wanted to spare you that fate, but I think it went wrong along the way as the adults wanted someone to blame for their loss and blamed you for it and the kids followed along not really knowing why. He looked down. So that is why. He spoke sad tears starting to run down his face. She realized she had said too much thinking fast she moved over to him and put an arm around his shoulder. Naruto listen. He looked up at her. I think you shouldn't worry so much what others think of you and think about what those who are truly close to you think. I mean, I spent most of my life worried what everyone one saw and less on what those close to me saw and thought about me she tried explained. Naruto nodded. So what do you think of me? He asked looking up at her hesitantly. She looked down at him with a smile. I think you're smarter than you give yourself credit and should remember that, she answered. He smiled, really smart. He asked as he had never been called that before as everyone always called him dumb or an idiot. She nodded, yeah, you're smart, I mean you gave Ajunan a run for his money in that test. You just need to remember to use your head and not your fist in a fight, she explained patting him on the back. Well, well, came Enko voice from behind them they quickly turned around to find her standing behind them watching, an amused smirk on her face. I never guessed you Azula were into younger men, she spoke with smirk. Azula's face reddened and she got up quickly, it's not that way, she answered brushing herself off before standing up straight. Naruto did the same, yeah we're just friends, he answered coughing a little. The woman chuckled, okay, but don't let me find you to experimenting with each other, she spoke getting their eyes to widen and face to turn five shades of red. Well anyways, she decided to change the subject, Naruto the Hokage wants to talk to you, she told him. He nodded, what about, he asked. She shrugged, he didn't say, just said for me to send you, she answered. The blonde nodded again before turning to head off, but stopping and looking back to the fire princess. Thanks Azula, he smiled before heading off. Azula nodded her head and watched him go. She then turned around just in time to catch Anko making kissy faces. She growled as her right eye twitched and a vein formed. Knockative, she yelled annoyed as the woman continued to mock her. The third watched as Naruto left, he had just talked to him about the Kyubi and the truth about what had really happened if you don't count not telling him about his parents yet. But that had to wait, he sighed the aging man sat up. The boy took it far better than he thought he would, but he guessed that was because of the talk he had with Azula. I'm going to have to watch that girl more closely he thought as she had figured out part of the truth about Naruto too quickly for his liking. He was certain if she dug deeper then she would no doubt learn the truth about his heritage as well. Or any other secret this village and council buried, he thought, turning around and looked out the window and out across the village. Several months later, Team Enko and Hiruzen sat quietly listening to Naruto as he complained about getting a more advanced mission again as he couldn't take doing them anymore. It's been close to five months since Team Enko has been formed and the group had shown to be a very efficient team during their simple D-rank missions. But they're also the most notorious mischievous team ever in the village history. Play pranks on everyone they had a chance to, even clients they didn't like. Even the fire daimyo cat, poor thing. They dyed it bright pink and really sad part was the woman liked it so much she now keeps the cat that way. Why in the world did I think placing Naruto with Anko was a good idea, he wondered to himself. Alright, alright, he waved his hand silencing the boy as he was tired of listening to the complaining. Anko do you think your team is ready for a more advanced mission? He asked. He was doing this only to get the three out of the village and give himself and the village some peace. Yeah I think the two can handle a C rank mission, she answered crossing her arms behind her head. He nodded and went through a few mission reports finally coming on to one that would take them a long time to accomplish. Okay here's one I think your team can handle. The women heading east to the land of demons to deal with something before coming back here to the land fire. It's a month long mission, but the only thing you really have to worry about is a few bandits something I think you three can handle, he spoke. Anko nodded. That sounds simple enough, she taking the report and looking it over. Good. He called for the client to enter the room. The woman was in her thirties and was of average height with pale skin and dark brown hair and dark grey eyes, she was wearing a dark blue and brown kimono. She looked at the three. 
Are these the ones that will be acting as my bodyguard? They're kind of young aren't they? She looked to the Hokage. Yes Taka they are, but I think they can more than handle it, he answered he. She nodded and looked at them. All right you three. We'll leave in three hours, so meet me at the west gate. I suggest you get red as this is a long trip, she explained before leaving. At the west gate the all their ninja appeared the woman was there waiting. Good, you're right on time. She spoke as she looked them over, are you all ready? She asked kindly. Yep, spoke a cheerful Naruto, Azula and Anko simply nodded. All right let's head off, she spoke before getting into her carriage and told the driver to go. As the carriage got started the three fell in place around it Anko staying close to Naruto as he was the least experienced of them. Hey Anko what is the mission exactly? asked Naruto. We're here to protect her for a month while in the land of demons taking care of some family business. Oh so why hire ninja, he asked again not really understanding. Well, she's a rich woman and may have a few enemies. We're mostly here to act as a deterrent, so no one gets any funny ideas, she explained getting him to nod. Days later they were setting in a hotel room, they were just across the room with Taka. Anko let out a yawn as she stretched her arms up, all right one of us has to stay with the client, she spoke looking over at them, and since our client is a woman, Naruto is out. So that leave it between you and me Azula, she spoke. Why can't I stay with her? pouted Naruto crossing his arms with a frown. Well I don't know maybe because she's a woman and you're a boy, it may be a little awkward, Azula answered before looking to Anko. I'll do it, you can stay here and watch Naruto, she answered. The blonde grunted at hearing that. All right that work with me, she suddenly popped up behind the blonde and grabbed the blonde into a headlock, it just means I can spend time with the little runt here, she teased playfully giving him a nuggie. Azula shook her head as she left the room going next door to the woman's room she was happy to get away from the two for a little while. Walking in, Azula was greeted by the woman getting undressed and catching a glimpse of a dragoon tattoo on the woman's right shoulder. Coughing slightly she got the woman's attention. Taka turned around and looked at her she smiled, can I help you, she asked. Yes, one of us has to stay with you and I was picked, Anko will take over around midnight, she explained. Taka nodded, all right then, she answered before heading back to the bathroom before looking back at her, make yourself at home, she told her before going in and shutting the door. Azula let out a sigh and went over to a table in the room she pulled her gauntlets off and set them down before removing her armor and set them down as well. Letting out a sigh she loosened her robes and sat down to relax a little, she pulled out a book from her pocket and started reading. It wasn't long until Taka came out of the bather she walked over to the bed and plopped down. She looked over at Azula, who was still reading. Azula was. She asked getting the firebender too looked over at her and nodded. Your eyes, they are quite beautiful, do you have some sort of bloodline that makes them that way? Azula set her book down, no it's just something the people in my land have. However, I do have a bloodline, she answered. Oh what is it that your ability? She asked curious now about the young woman. Azula simple extended her hand and let her blue fire form. I can manipulate fire without chakra, lighting and earth as well, she answered, putting the fire out she spoke again, so when did you get that dragon on your back? She asked interested in it. Taka smiled a long time ago. Do you want to see the whole thing? She asked Azula nodded. The woman got up and turned away showing her back and let her bather rob slide off revealing the wild thing. The dragon moved down from her right shoulder down, stopping just at mid-thigh. It was a light blue with a green mane and some white. Its eyes were a bright yellow as well. That, however, wasn't the only thing there were clouds in place along with some flowers of different colors. So what do you think? She asked glancing back at her. It's nice. Azula answered with a little bit of amazement. Where do you get something like this done? She asked, thinking of getting one to cover up the large scar on her side. The women chuckled. Interested in getting one, are we? Well when we get to Demon, I'll introduce you to a friend of mine. He's a master tattoo artist he may be willing to work on you, she spoke slipping her bather rob back on and sitting down. So why you are interested in getting one you? It hurts a lot and isn't something you should just go out and get, she asked. I have a large nasty looking scar running down my side, I want to cover up. I figured getting a big tattoo would do it, she answered. A scar? She looked her over, may I see it, she asked. 
Azula shrugged and nodded she got up and let her top part of her robes down and turned to her side showing the large sack running from the center of her chest to her right shoulder and down her right side. It goes all the way down to my inner thigh, she explained. Ouch! So how did it happen caught in an explosion, she asked. Yeah got hit by sharp metal, I was lucky to have lived she answered, pulling her top back up. So you think he could cover it up, she asked. Taka nodded. Yes, but I think it will take a very big tattoo, almost bodysuit to cove something like that, she answered tapping her chin in thought. It will cost a lot too and take some time to complete, she told her. Azula nodded. That won't be a problem for me, she answered. The woman nodded. I can't understand why you would want to cove that scar up and in thing my friend would be willing to do it for, she smiled. Thanks. Azula smiled a little they kept talking for a while until Taka began to get tired and went to bed. Azula stayed up keeping watch, wait for Anko to come and take watch. It was somewhere around 1 o'clock, 1.30 did the Junin appeared to relieve her and let her get some sleep. Going back to their room, Azula found that there was only one bed and Naruto was sprawled across it. She grumbled about Anko being cheap and set her things down and sat down on the bed and pushed the blonde over so she could lie down with her back turned to him. However, Naruto rolled over and snuggled up against her saying something about being soft. This probably wouldn't have been such a problem if it wasn't for the fact that his arm was wrapped around her and was feeling her up in his sleep. Red-faced, her eye began to twitch with annoyance. She then brought her elbow back hard to his head knocking him out of the bed. Hey ouch! He yelled getting up. He looked at her. What was that for? He yelled at her as rubbed his sore head. You're a little pervert. She answered before pulling the cover over her and going to sleep. What is she talking about, he wondered not understanding as he crawled back in bed and under the covers going back to sleep. The end. Now we will 